And this morning's monologue is about music. But before I begin on that, I want to direct your attention to Thusi's eyes. As when you see something, watch this, see if you can notice it. Okay. got spooked. Okay. What I've noticed, maybe you notice something different than me. Uh, what I've noticed is his cat eyes. The, the pupil, the black part. It might, might kind of be like this. But when you see something move, you go, it just opens it up like that and then it kind of and as soon as he gets stimulated and it go right back and it looks neat because for humans uh, as a first responder as a paramedic I was trained to you know check people's pupils and stuff and when we see pupils that big <laughs> in this much light the humans on drugs and so it's just kind of funny. It's like, <laughs> and then it goes back. And it happens just so quickly. And he has like a smile on his face. I don't know. Maybe in that instant he is on drugs. Some endorphins or catecholamines are, are really stimulating him. But music. Music is so important to us for for many ways. One of them is that it helps us to unlock a way of communicating and vocalizing that's different from words. It uses a slightly different part of our brain. As a paramedic at school, we were told about stroke patients and of course everybody knows that if someone's having a difficult time speaking maybe see if they can write it down okay it uses a different part of the brain another option is to <laughs> instruct your patient to try and sing what they're trying to say and of course there is there is stories and cases where this has been quite successful for people so it helps us to communicate differently the the, the book one of the books I'm reading right now it's the rememberings by Sinead O'Connor and then she's, she said in interviews many times over the years that, that, that you know, <laughs> that even when, when talking to the interviewer on the talk show and stuff, right, try to sell albums and concert tickets and so forth, that she really has a hard time with conversation, kind of like, you know, you could see sometimes she almost wants to start strumming or she says, you know, I'm, I'm able to, you know, express myself more clearly and when I'm singing. And, and in her book, in the, the foreword or in the beginning part, she does say, you know, you know, read my book, enjoy, this is, this is me, and if it doesn't make sense, she says, try singing it. That's remarkable. And singing also helps us to heal, to, to process a feeling, to, to let go, to push back really powerful I 
can't say his name or it'll get his attention. Music and song is, it helps us to protest in a gentle, calm, patient way. It helps us to celebrate. It helps us to grieve. And in, in, in our society, we, we, we have singers, we have musicians, we have songwriters, we have vocalists, we have backup singers. If music has become so specialized now, at least in, in our culture, in other cultures, and there was a time in history when everybody sang in the, in the group, in the community, the, the tribe. The, yes, there might be a lead singer or two, and that's, that's part of the human condition. But there was a time that everybody sang and everybody made music. These days, music has turned into something that that we buy, something that we we sell. Music has turned into We found several of his... The, the grasshopper went under the... that I brought back for him. It... it went under the... the... the oven. So we took... took out the... the tray for the pots and pans in the bottom and broomed out what was underneath. Well, we couldn't find the grasshopper, but we did find several of his toys, which, as you can hear, has been a really good thing for him. But music is now a commodity, which, it's neither here nor there, it's neither good nor bad, it's, it's just, that's where we're at now. It is neat to to comment on though. I would suspect because I hear so many people these days talking about saying they have anxiety or they have depression and, and mental health and and so many things it's like well if there was a list of of ten or twenty questions one of them might be how often do you sing? As a child, did you sing? Or what is your relationship to music? Were you encouraged? to sing or, or do music? Why don't you sing or, or do you practice your music anymore? Because I think people would feel a lot better these days if they, they use that part of their brain when we make our own music, when we sing, when we, when we drum anything at all. It uses a different part of our brain than when we just listen. Do you sing along to? You know, you listen to your favorite song. How often do you have a favorite song? Do you allow yourself to sing along to your favorite song? Important, important things. Of course, I mentioned dance the other day. That would also be in the list. How often do you dance? And 
How often do you look up at the sky? How do you feel when you look up at the sky? But on the topic of music, those are some of my, my thoughts for you today. It's an important and even at times a necessary way or maybe the only way that we can still vocalize and communicate through uh, a temporary or maybe even a permanent uh, brain injury. It, it helps us to better understand ourselves. It helps us to better understand others. I mentioned it can be used for self-reflection, for healing, but also for protest, also for celebration, also in ceremony and for grieving. And I, I concluded with with referencing it's it's something that has also now turned into a commodity and maybe that's in a very small way related to the the pain, depression, anxiety that people feel across societies so prevalently now, because maybe they've they've stopped practicing one of these little parts of the that's so necessary for the the human condition. Practicing music, making it, drumming, singing playing an instrument, anything at all. Just a thought. Not a question. All for now.